Hey guys, how you doing? It's Christmas Eve, so I've got a bit of a Christmas special for you uh, out in the woods, and we're going to do cooked partridge, partridge in a pear tree. So I'm going to show you how to butch this up, cook it on a little tin um, dish that I've got, a bit of a different fire setup, um, and then uh, and then yeah, eat eat the little bugger. So um, stay tuned and let's get into it. Okay, so I've taken the partridge a bit of uh, far away from where I'm camping out tonight because um, I'm going to be throwing the guts just out out in the woods for the foxes to have. I've got Dexter, my dog, with me. He's he's running around, so if you see a dog legging it around the place, don't worry, that's Dexter. Okay, so partridge, ground nesting bird, and I'll go into a little bit later in the episode how to catch one of these. Um, but if I was to catch this alive, then you need to dispatch it. So the, the quickest and most humane way to do that is just grab it by the, by the head like that, um, nice strong grip, and then in one fell swoop, take the head clean off and that gets thrown dog chases after it very interested and uh, left for the foxes the next thing you're going to do really simple is um, take these wings off so these nice nice big wings here really pretty we're going to take those off okay uh, and all I'm going to do is grab them nice and close to where they meet the bird and then if you if try, try and get you to hear this and that was it crunching and dislocating all right so then you twist, keep on twisting, and then eventually, about there, oh, just pops off like so, wing gone. And then that's exactly the same with the different, uh, the other one here. Uh, and I'll try and get that in a different view so it's a bit, bit clearer for you. Okay, so here it is, that's the wing. And I'm just gonna grab it nice and close, trying to hear that again as I twist it. all the way and then one pull he says pull there we go and it pops off wing to the foxes okay now what we can do is have a quick inspection of what's called the crop and that's what this partridge has been eating so i didn't shoot this one um or, or catch it it was bought from a game dealer and if you look in there it's got uh, sort of like uh, looks like pea shoots or grass in there uh, what you can find in these sometimes is little stones and that is totally normal so um, pigeon do it as well so do chickens if anyone holds chickens a little bit of corn in there a bit of wheat um, so they, they eat these stones and then it stays here in the crop and the stones help to digest the uh, food and sort of munch it all around but that there is quite important because what I'm going to do for the next step is just getting this breast off is I'm going to stick my thumb right down into there that crop is all the way in nice and intimate and what I'm feeling for is the inside of that breast bone so I'm, I'm right in there in the inside of the breast bone uh, and you know you have got it the right way around if you give yourself the thumbs up then all I can see is the back of the bird and all you can see is the front that is good you don't want it to be this way you want it to be that way I know it's a bit grim all right so you, you see that I'm um, on sort of the breast side of the neck as well and what I'm going to do now um, before the light fades is get my thumb the other side and force that that into there as well so I've got my thumb right in the cavity there some animal screaming there now what I'm going to do is rip it inside out so pull pull my hands away from each other and then tear it inside out so I've got my thumbs in either side now what I'm going to do is pull them away from each other lots of clunking and griming and then as I pull them apart all the guts will stay in my right hand on on this side and the breast bone which you can see coming out here now starts to emerge and as I continue to pull it round that's on the breast meat there all the breast meat nicely comes away so as you can see and there we have it and there's all the guts and gore in one hand, and then there's the breast, a bit of the crop left on there, which Dex is really interested in, which I'll pull away in a minute. So that's the guts. You can see in there we've got um, this bit of liver there, and then it's kidneys, and I think there's his heart there. Um, and that's a bit of the blood meat from where it was shot, a bit of the blood build up. Um, on there you have got the legs, and the legs you could use um, to cook up, but to be honest with you, there isn't really much, much on them, so that there is for the foxes. Or Dexter.
All right, so looking at the nice breast we've got here, um, if we wanted to, we could just bang that in a um, like a zebra billy tin or um, any of the sort of billy tin and cook that up as a nice roast partridge breast. Um, if you look at the on inspection, you see the hole here. That's just where it's been shot. So this one was obviously shot um, on a field somewhere by looking at what it was eating in a crop. It's eating a bit of wheat in that. So that's where it's been hit. The meter on there, totally edible, um, although it is a bit unsightly. All right, so what we're going to do, without the use of a knife, so if you're going to use a knife, you can just take it down the um, the, the uh, breastplate there, either side, but I'm not going to use a knife, I'm just going to use my fingers. And you can run your fingers underneath, and uh, sorry, your thumb rather, and running your thumb underneath, it does all start to, to come away. So that's one side, sort of where you've got a little mini fillet there, if you're um, sort of similar to chicken. And the other side as well, one of my fingers up it. There we go. And start to move the whole thing off the breastplate. There we go. Little mini fillet left there. Um, so you see that's all done with my hands. With a knife, obviously you can do a bit of a neater job, but I've got a decent amount of the meat off there. Um, not really much left on there, which is quite good. Again, for the foxes, into the woods it goes. Dex is too thick to realise it's over there. Um, and then I'm left with this nice sort of double double breast fillet of partridge there, which we're gonna um, we're gonna fry up in a second. And then my two little mini fillets that were underneath. Proper job. Let's go and get a fire going. Okay, so the fire I'm going to do is a take on a Swedish candle. Swedish candles you'd saw with a chainsaw or a handsaw, an axe, into a round like this, which is a small log. Um, and then you stuff that with twigs and birch bark, light it, and you make a, make, a, make a fire that way. What I'm going to do, like I said, is a take on that. So I'll put that in my pocket so I don't lose it. I haven't got a, um, a chainsaw with me, clearly. Um, and my handsaw, sawing wood this way, sort of, um, with the grain, for lack of a better term, um, is really hard work. So I'm going to try and split it with my axe. And then I'm going to split it again. And then split it again. At the end of all of these, I'm going to point them all off. So I'm going to stab them into the ground in a moment. Nothing too fancy, not making French pianos. Okay, so I've got my uh, four pieces, and what I'm gonna do now is knock them into the ground in the shape of which they were, roughly. Now it's a case of stuffing nice thin sticks and a load of birch bark that I've collected in between those, um, in between the gaps there, and then setting a fire as normal. And what will happen is that I'll catch light, create a platform for me to cook on, but also set those four quarters alight as well, which will give me some embers to cook on later on if I need it. Okay, so Swedish candles can be a bit notoriously difficult to get going, so I've uh, stuffed that one full of sticks and birch bark and just letting it tick over there. In the meantime, as promised, I'll show you a survival method of catching a partridge. So like I say, they're ground nesting birds, so you would find them predominantly on the ground. Uh, and what I've got here is a sharpened stick with some string attached to it, so some cordage. And then what I've done is threaded onto there a load of uh, raisins all the way across, all the way up like that, down to there. Uh, and what you'll do is you'll stab this in the ground, nice and nice and deep so it won't move, and then lay this out along the um, trail where you think there might be partridge. 
And what the partridge will do, and um, this works the same with pheasants as well, is it'll come and eat this raisin and then get a bit greedy, eat this one and then this one and then this one and keep on eating the raisins all the way and not realising that it's engulfing the string as well. And then it'll get to the end, no more raisins, go to walk away and this will all be in its stomach so it won't be able to pull away. Um, it isn't the most humane way to catch a partridge but in a survival situation it is a method you could employ. Let's cook it up. So my take on a Swedish candle is burned away quite nicely there and the beauty of this is my partridge in my dish there, which Dex is quite interested in. Go away. Partridge in the dish there, that there now just sits on top and that can cook away there nicely uh, without sm smothering the flames that are down there. Partridge, like a lot of game, is really low in fat, so it has got a tendency to stick. So I'm just going to give this guy a bit of a flip over. Oh, look at that. All right, that took literally three or four minutes, so let's have a little look on the other side. And I think, yeah, I think we're about done. Take this dish off and let's, uh, let's tuck in. So like I say, partridge is quite quite low in fat, so it's got a tendency if you cook it for too long to dry right out. So didn't cook that for very long, and I think put this dish down. Have a look. Yeah, it's lovely and moist there on the inside still. That was on there for about yeah about three. Well, probably about five minutes in total, um, keeping it nice and moist still. And uh, yeah, it's quite gamey, but that is that is really good. Um, falling down a hole. All right, that's it for today's video, guys. Uh, I'm gonna give Dex a some. There you go. Um, thanks so much for watching that. Hope you enjoyed it and you you learned something. Bit of a different take on the Swedish um, candle there, and maybe a method of uh, of um, preparing partridge that you haven't seen before. The same can be done for any bird. Um, pigeon's really good for it. You can, you can do it with pheasant if you want to, but it does take a lot of a lot of ripping because uh, it's obviously a bigger bird. Um, so give it a bash and um, yeah, give it a try, and then drop drop a message down in the comments. Let me know you've done it uh, and you're enjoying it. Thanks to everyone that has subscribed. It's a 58 now, um, so it is growing, which is brilliant, and it, it encourages me to get out and do a bit more of these videos because because um, it seems like people are enjoying them, which is really nice. So um, please subscribe if you're watching this. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, which will be down there. Um, give it a like, give it a comment. If there's anything you want to see in the future, just send me a message on um, on my Instagram as well, Charlie Brunscott Bushcraft, or um, or in the comment section, and I'll get to it. Meanwhile, me and Dexter are going to enjoy this. Thanks very much. Bye.